Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best SNES games of all time. For this list, we'll be looking at the absolute greatest of what Nintendo's 16 bit wonder had to offer. Which Super Nintendo game do you have fond memories of playing? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Super Ghouls and Ghosts Capcom made things a bit easier when they transitioned Arthur to 16-bit, but that doesn't mean his SNES outing won't still pummel you into the dirt. Once again, the knight is tasked with saving Princess Guinevere from an evil emperor and his hordes of nightmarish creatures. Loads of awesome power-ups like the ground-traveling scythe and upward-firing crossbow are fun tools of death, but you'll have to stay on your toes because the enemies will simply never stop coming. Add on Arthur's two-hit health bar and exceptionally tough boss fights, and you've got one of the most challenging yet satisfying action platformers of the system. Number 19. Killer Instinct In an arcade era dominated by Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, Rare released this fighter with a heavy focus on pulling off incredible combos. Its fast pace and varied roster helped it stand out, which led to a Super Nintendo port that's still fun to play today. Some sacrifices obviously had to be made when it came to graphics and sound, but the gameplay was as smooth as ever. There's nothing quite like hearing Ultra Combo screamed over the game's awesome soundtrack after pulling off an intense string of button inputs. <laughs> Number 18, F-Zero. The F-Zero franchise has a reputation for being stressful, and its legacy began right here. Set in the year 2560, it focuses on high-stakes Grand Prix with hover cars. As one of the launch titles for the system, it showed off the Super Nintendo's graphical and gameplay improvements with tremendous style. Its tough-to-master courses likely caused a lot of players pain as they went careening into barriers and other racers. It was sleeker and faster than any other racer around, and perfecting its controls and tracks was definitely rewarding. It's just a shame that Nintendo doesn't show it more love these days. Number 17. Super Street Fighter 2 – The New Challengers you can't go wrong with any version of this classic Capcom fighter, but for its new features, we have to give love to the new challengers. There were a ton of improvements made over past iterations. Customizable speed settings, new attacks, and a reversal mechanic made all the difference when fighting. Smaller changes like reworked graphics and character animations made it a bit more polished. But what really got us excited were the four new characters. Kami, Fei Long, T-Hawk, and DJ are now series main stays. All in all, it's the best version of a terrific fighting game. Number 16. Super Mario Kart Super Mario Kart is for those who want something more manageable than F-Zero, which, let's be honest, is the vast majority of us. Putting Mario characters in a kart racer was a novel idea at the time that has grown into one of Nintendo's most profitable franchises. While its controls may not have aged as well as other installments, Super Mario Kart still deserves heaps of praise. It was an absolute delight racing beloved characters through the Mushroom Kingdom, intensified by chaotic items to use against your opponent. For two-player competitions, whether it be racing or battling, there was nothing else like it around. Number 15. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 – Turtles in Time yeah! 
The early 90s were a wonderful period for beat-em-ups, and Turtles in Time just may be the best. It follows the heroes after Shredder sends them through a time warp. The player then has to fight their way through different eras. The art style lovingly recreates the look of the popular animated series, and each turtle has unique stats that go beyond just using a different weapon. As a port of the arcade game, the SNES version unfortunately couldn't have all four turtles playable at once. But other than that, it's a fantastic port that also adds new modes as well as bosses and enemies. Cowabunga! Number 14. Star Fox It may not look like much now, but by 1993 standards, Star Fox was jaw-dropping. The rail shooter used the Super FX co-processor and polygonal graphics to simulate 3D before it was an actuality. It was quite literally unlike anything any console had ever seen. Beyond its unique look, the game was just a blast to play. It had us flying through enemy-infested areas and shooting down foes to protect our teammates. Gameplay was simple, but never boring. Interestingly, it also offered three paths with different difficulties and levels. This added a replayability factor that was absent in most games of the genre at the time. <laughs> Number 13, Secret of Mana. The Super Nintendo was a haven for great RPGs, and Square gave us most of them. Secret of Mana follows a young boy who unknowingly unleashes monsters into the world. He and his allies must venture to eight temples to power up the Mana Sword and bring peace. While that isn't exactly an original fantasy story, there were plenty of other elements that made Secret of Mana unique. Instead of a single player controlling a party, up to two others via the multi-tap could join for a three-player adventure. Its fights were also fought in real time rather than in turn-based battles, and each character could change equipment and spells through an innovative ring command menu. Number 12, Super Castlevania 4. Like Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Castlevania IV features the same simple plot as the game that began the franchise. Simon Belmont, Vampire Hunter, is taking on Dracula and his minions. What it lacked in story originality, it more than made up for with stellar gameplay and music. Simon's ability to thwip his whip in eight directions made it easier to block projectiles and slay monsters. And there were plenty of other weapons to collect along the way, like firebombs and a cross-like boomerang. It's also got terrifically atmospheric level layouts, bolstered by wonderful enemy and boss designs. Number 11, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Though it's not quite as good as its predecessor, Yoshi's Island is still one of the best platformers on the Super Nintendo. The dino's unique mechanics, like tossing eggs and the hover jump, added a new layer to a familiar formula. The hand-drawn art style, which resembled a pop-up book, was undeniably adorable. All of these elements kickstarted Yoshi's career as a bona fide platforming star in his own right. And it may have placed higher if it wasn't for Baby Mario's alarm-like wailing that happens every single time you get hit. Despite featuring one of gaming's most annoying sounds, this spin-off is a delight. Number 10, Mega Man X.
Taking place a century after the NES series, this spin-off brought a ton of new attributes to Capcom's Blue Bomber. Not only did 16 bits offer more intricate levels and character designs, but the story was a bit grander than a mad scientist using robots for evil. The villain this time, Sigma, was a sentient robot who had gone nuts. He and his animal-based robot bosses offered some of the best fights the series has ever seen. Combative gameplay was as great as always utilizing power-ups from fallen bosses and X's arm cannon. There were also notable improvements to platforming sections, such as the ability to scale walls and dash that made traversal much more fluid. Number 9. Super Mario RPG – The Legend of the Seven Stars There was a time where placing Mario in an RPG may have seemed like a strange idea, but Paper Mario and the Mario & Luigi spin-offs owe thanks to Square's work here. Super Mario RPG is a beautiful blend of Mario's characters and elements with a traditional turn-based gameplay that Square is known for. The plot is notable for having Bowser not be the big bad, but rather a teammate the player can unlock. Two other party members, Gino and Mallow, are some of the best written characters Mario has ever come across. Despite the Nintendo 64 being mere months away, the game also sold fantastically well. That's just what happens when one of the best RPG studios around meets gaming's most famous icon. Number 8. Kirby Superstar Kirby's platformers don't get as much love as Mario's, but with games like Superstar, they really should have. The collection features a reworked version of Kirby's Dreamland as well as eight new games. Whether you're racing King Dedede, challenging yourself in the Boss Rush arena, or going on one of several platforming adventures, there's bound to be something here that will make you smile. It introduced helpers to the series. Giving up a copy ability would give Kirby an ally controlled by the computer or a second player. It also slightly tweaked gameplay by having each ability grants Kirby more than one attack, like in previous games. Number 7. Final Fantasy VI Square's Final Fantasy was already a respected franchise, so the fact that the sixth entry, or third for North Americans, was bigger, better, and bolder than anything that came before is saying quite a lot. With a heavier focus on technology and warfare, it tackled more serious themes than other installments, and its characters are some of the best throughout the decades-spanning franchise. Kefka, the game's unhinged clown-like antagonist, is still one of the best villains in gaming history. And with a whopping 14 playable heroes, gameplay could be as varied as you wanted it to be. Number 6. Donkey Kong Country 2 – Diddy's Conquest The first will always be a classic, but the follow-up is just a bit better in every field. With Donkey Kong kidnapped by King K. Rule, Diddy and his girlfriend Dixie set out to save him. Rare made the levels bigger and more challenging, added more animal companions, and improved on the already impressive graphics. While Diddy got his name in the title and was the faster of the two, it was Dixie that was the true star. Her ponytail gave her the ability to glide over tough jumps and obstacles, clearly making her the better Kong. No matter which of the two you prefer, Diddy's conquest took them through enchanting levels with some of the best music Rare has ever produced. Number 5. Earthbound <laughs> 
From poor seller to a legitimate masterpiece, Earthbound has had a strange journey in pop culture. As the only game in the Mother series to release outside of Japan initially, it enthralled those who played it at release. And that legacy has only grown over time. It follows the young boy Ness and his new allies as they attempt to stop the evil alien Gigas from taking over the world. The writing is fantastic with an odd sense of humor that parodies Western culture. Its characters, playable or not, made the world come alive and made us want to explore every nook and cranny. It's an influential RPG that has inspired many others, such as Toby Fox's Undertale. Number 4. Chrono Trigger Chrono Trigger is the crown jewel of Square's work on the Super Nintendo. It follows some of the most compelling RPG characters of the time as they travel through various eras to prevent the future destruction of their world. It utilizes many popular RPG mechanics, however it does away with a turn-based battle system in favor of a time-based one depending on character, attack, and spell. Its art style, particularly character design from Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama, is still gorgeous today. And the time travel plot allowed the developers to build incredibly unique worlds. More importantly, it was wonderful fun seeing how our actions in the past could change things in the future, and it led to 12 different endings. Number 3. Super Metroid From the moment the title appears on the screen, Super Metroid instills a theme of loneliness that will grow throughout the game. After catching Ridley stealing the last Metroid in existence, bounty hunter Samus Aran follows him to Zebes. From there, it's an isolated trek through labyrinth-themed tunnels with plenty of unwelcoming wildlife. Much of what the Metroid series is known for began right here. Its map is a puzzle to be conquered, with frequent obstacles that can only be cleared by obtaining certain power-ups. Players need to search every possible spot to find answers with no tips to help them through it, and it's just the right balance of tough but rewarding. Number 2. The Legend of Zelda – A Link to the Past A Link to the Past features some of the best art direction and sound design of the entire SNES library. And much like Super Metroid, the foundation of what we know as Zelda was established here. Hyrule's lore, the Master Sword, engaging NPCs, and stylish, unique weapons are all still important facets of the franchise. While the story still boils down to rescuing Zelda, there are so many other smaller details that propelled this entry to being the most resonant. It was the first world in the series that felt lived in and had a history. A Link to the Past deserves all the credit for what Zelda grew to be. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Super Mario World <laughs> Sometimes you don't need to change much to make a masterpiece sequel. Released alongside the Super Nintendo, Mario's Adventure Through Dinosaur Land is one of the best platformers ever created. Levels were more varied than they had ever been, yet somehow felt familiar to longtime fans. Its overworld, taking Mario through various islands, had many enticing secret levels begging to be discovered. That's not to mention the gameplay, perfected with improvements like the spin jump, new power-ups like the cape feather, and gaming's most beloved green sidekick. No offense, Luigi. Any player, no matter their skill, can pick up Super Mario World and be delighted through the end. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.